Think Pink, a Family Matters breast cancer special, is made possible by the following partner. Providence Health and Services has served Northwest communities for more than 150 years. With compassion and excellence, Providence cares for all, especially the poor and vulnerable. At Providence, we're simply dedicated to your good health. Think Pink, a Family Matters breast cancer special. Hello, I'm K2's Deborah Knapp, and welcome to Think Pink. Breast cancer is a leading threat to women's lives here in the Northwest. Portland is a world leader when it comes to the effort to prevent and eradicate the disease. In the next half hour, we'll meet everyday people who are leading exceptional lives, working to beat this deadly disease in different ways. From advances in surgeries to breakthroughs in treatment, the fight for a cure is powered by multiple resources. One of them, a way for patients and doctors to explore new possibilities. I was diagnosed with invasive lobular carcinoma, March 29th of last year. Less common form of breast cancer that is often undetected by our current imaging technology, which unfortunately means it's usually later stage at diagnosis, which was true for me. I had stage three breast cancer. I had surgery first, actually, because at the time we did not know the full extent of my disease. And then I was heading, next step for me would be chemotherapy. And with Allison, we were in consultation about what that treatment protocol would be. And I knew she would advocate for and recommend clinical trials, and she did. Clinical trials or research studies or clinical studies, there's a few names for them, are ways that um, people or patients are able to participate and get new treatments or try new therapies to see what should be the new standard of care. Almost always we're doing a clinical study because we have a question. What I like to tell my patients is the reason I know that surgery is good for breast cancer, the reason I know that you should take this pill or this drug is because some woman or some person participated in a clinical trial in the past. And there was a clinical trial available at the time by the name of ECOG 5103, a mouthful. But it was actually a trial testing the efficacy of a drug that's produced by a company here in our own backyard, Avastin by Genentech. And it was added to my chemotherapy protocol. So you have the standard IV and the standard drugs, and then another bag was added. So it took another hour or so on each treatment cycle. And at the time, you don't know whether you're getting the drug or getting placebo. I will say that adult cancer patients don't participate in as many clinical trials as we'd like. Um, when we think about um, the children's oncology programs, um, they tend to have very high participation rates of children in oncology clinical trials, and that's why we've had such amazing advances in treatments for, uh, for instance, childhood leukemia. However, adult cancer patients, it's somewhere on the order of 2 to 3 percent of adult cancer patients go on clinical studies. And really, probably upwards of 50 to 60 percent of patients would be eligible. I believe I have a responsibility to contribute to find a cure if I can. And second, I wanted to be or have access to drugs that might not be available in the open market if they weren't currently approved treatments. And then third, I never wanted to look back and think with regret that I didn't do everything I possibly could to beat this disease. Every life, every, every person who's had a cancer diagnosis is touched by someone who participated in a clinical trial in the past. There are just wicked smart people Ali Conlon in that company that all over the world that are committing their lives to trying to save us. And I think I want to be a partner to that and I want to be in that fight with them. When a patient ends their treatment, the road ahead may seem unclear. We found a place that helps with the transition from patient to life as a survivor. I was diagnosed in, on July 17th of 2009, and it was breast cancer. I had a body scan, I'd had an abnormal ovary. They did a ultrasound and then an ultimate surgery and found out that it was ovarian cancer as well. You are thrust into another world, basically, that you know nothing about. The Survivor Clinic is a service that we provide to patients who are 
who have recently completed therapy and we aim to counsel them on what late effects they might expect, assess what acute effects they're having, and make appropriate referrals for services that they might need. Your whole focus was on what you were going through and the cancer, and you knew you could get answers to questions immediately. But then it stops. They have told me that they felt like when they were in treatment, they were doing something, you know, doing something to fight the cancer, and they were well monitored, you know, very frequent appointments. And then when they were finished, all of that kind of ended, and you know, what, what do I do now? I'm not doing anything, I should be, there's gotta be something that I can do. For me, the survivor clinic was a place where I could go that I felt I could spend time. I knew I had, like I think the appointment was about an hour and a half. Everything I wanted to know, there was an answer for, or she could give me the name or, the, or you know, a brochure about where I could get the answer. We create a, a wellness plan for each person, and part of that is connecting them with their primary care provider. And it outlines for them, you know, who is responsible for doing future screenings, whether it's on the oncologist or the primary care provider. So it lets everyone know these are the things that need to be done and this is who is going to be responsible for that. This is it. I mean, this is my roadmap. It tells me when to do what. It has everything. I mean, it, it is. Otherwise, I think you could hear about it here and there you could research it. There's certainly not a lack of cancer clinics and cancer support groups. That's not the issue, but I think to be able to sit down and have somebody put it together in a package for you, that this is actually tailored to me, um, I think that's really important. I mean, I can't, I can't even say how important it is. I think you have a million questions that you realize aren't answered. I'm not the only one that's walking out of cancer treatment and wondering what you should feel like, what, you know, what to do, what goes on now that you're supposedly, you know, healthy. For more information on the Survivors Clinic, just head to the Family Matters section at katu.com and click on the Think Pink icon. One year ago, they touched so many with their personal stories of courage in the face of breast cancer. Tonight, we check in to see how far they've come. A couple days towards the end where I actually dreaded going, because I know it would make me feel worse, but um, it was okay. The people who work there were amazing. Love you too. Thanks for taking such good care of me. And so to come out and see the finish line ribbon was just amazing. <laughs> It was great. I walked with not only my mom, but my family and friends joined me this year, so we had a group. And a um, little emotional as you cross the finish line, but overall it was amazing to see there's lots of pink. Lots of pink out there. Actually, the first time that I ran, we'll call it a jog, is I kicked off my Hood to Coast team um, at Hood to Coast last year, really in honor of my best friend who died of cancer. And she ran leg one 19 years, so I walked, jogged, leg one um, for her and for me, and it felt great. It was a lot harder than I thought it would be. Um, I hired my running coach that I had years ago, and after all the, what he calls trauma to my body, we started slow, five minutes running, five minutes walking. And I gradually built up over months, dropping a minute of the walking, adding running, until now I'm running you know, 12 miles on a long run and running about five days a week. I would say if you asked me six months ago, I was more defined by it. And now I think it was something I went through, and it was an experience, um, certainly not fun, but I learned a lot. And now I would say that I'm good, I'm doing good. My new normal is it's progressed from having it in the forefront of my mind every day, but now that I think about it occasionally, I don't focus on it. Um, tried to move on, the experience overall, um, I feel very blessed. Life is good, and back to life. something happens to you when you're diagnosed with this disease and you become 
the, the, the strong part of you that sometimes you didn't even know you had comes right out and says, that's it, we're gonna fight it, we're gonna do it. And I'm not saying that that's the case for everybody, but I'm 32 years old. I want 32 more, and I want 32 after that. And it's not, I don't think that, you know, a speed bump in the road is gonna stop that. I think you have to have hope. It is with great joy that I now pronounce you as husband and wife. Paul, you may kiss Aaron for the first time. You know, it was really this celebration and to be able to <clears throat> tell him what an amazing person I think he is and how incredibly lucky I feel to be with him. I was really emotional at seeing myself because I had been bald and looked really sick for a year <laughs> and almost two years. And it was really, I was really excited to see myself looking so much like the way I did before I was sick and to be able to see myself in a way that if people passed me on the street, nobody would have any idea. After the wedding, I came home, I started chemo the following day. When I first was diagnosed, I think I was a lot more fearful that I, I didn't have any control over the situation or I didn't have any power in getting better. And that's just simply not true. I, I have a ton of control over it and a ton of power to um, change the way I live so that I feel better through treatment. I think I was changing, I was in a kind of transitional time and I decided to change treatment with that transition. Um, it has turned out to be a really great fit and I have a great relationship with my doctor who is uh, really aggressive and you know as horrified that I have cancer as I am and and wants to to beat it as much as I do and and I feel much more of a team um, partnership in that way here we are I am having a um, it's called a modified radical mastectomy um, which just means that it includes the lymph nodes underneath my armpit the purpose is that we are um, essentially taking out the mothership. <laughs> um, in conversations with my doctor and my surgeon, they thought that um, if the mothership was gone, it was the best chance of having uh, little to no reoccurrence. So we'll do the surgery today, and then in a month I'll start some radiation, and I'll do that for six weeks. And then uh, when the radiation's over, I'll do three more months of chemo, and then hopefully I will be good. We've been kind of learning as we go and, and just doing what people told us to do and um, learning how to really interpret when you feel like something is wrong and what to do about that. And, and when we started to feel like something was wrong, um, we switched doctors and found a really great path uh, and partnership with our doctor. So I think that, you know, we talk all the time about how it was one phone call, one phone call changed all of that for us. We just simply called another doctor who um, wanted to give me a shot. And I knew that if I was given the shot, I was gonna take advantage of it. If you start to feel like things are wrong, if you start to feel like people are telling you things that don't make sense to you or that you don't agree with, go find somebody else. It doesn't ever hurt to ask somebody else. All they can do is give you another opinion. And it just so happened that I liked the one I heard. We actually both said in our vows that um, is really important to me and, and remains important to me is that, you know, from day one, we decided we were gonna do this as a team. And whatever happens, we can do it as long as we stick together. And however hard it gets, we, we're gonna do it together. <laughs>